Well, hello, Drama Fest. This year at Drama Fest, as you know, we had to go online. But despite that, we did not want to miss the opportunity to showcase student work from across the province. And so we adapted. And with the help of Cape Breton University and the Boardmore Theatre, we took our showcase to YouTube. Thank you so much to everyone who worked on these shows. We know how much hard work goes into a show in a regular year, so seriously, congratulations to all of you. All right, Drama Fest, let's get to it. Here at Cape Breton University, tradition never stands still. Ours is a tradition of possibility, inspiring us to become the leaders of tomorrow and creating a world we can be proud of. Ours is a tradition of new, and everyone is welcome. Who's there? Nay, answer me. Stand and unfold yourself. Long live the king. Bernardo? Welcome, Horatio. Welcome, good Marcellus. What? Has this thing appeared again tonight? I have seen nothing. Horatio says, tis but our fantasy. Tush, tush, t'will not appear. Peace, break thee off. Look, where it comes. In the same figure like the king that's dead, it would be spoke to. Question it, Horatio. What art thou that you surface this time of night? It is offended. See, it stalks away. Stay! Speak! Speak! I charge thee, speak! It's gone and will not answer. It is not like, is it not like the king? As thou art thyself. Let us impart what we have seen tonight unto young Hamlet. For upon my life, the spirit done to us will speak to him. Let's start, I pray, and I this morning know, where we shall find him, where we shall find him most convenient. Though yet of Hamlet, our dear brother's death, the memory be green, and that it us be fitted to bear our hearts in grief, and our whole kingdom to be contracted in one brow of woe. Yet so far hath discretion fought with nature that we with wisest sorrow think on him, together with remembrance of ourselves. Therefore, our sometime sister, now our queen, have we, as twere with a defeated joy, taken to wife, nor have we herein barred your better wisdoms, which have freely gone with this affair along, for all our thanks. And now, Laertes, what's the news with you? You told, you told us of some suit. What is Laertes? What wouldst thou have, Laertes? My dread lord, your leave and favor to return to France. Have you your father's leave? What says Polonius? He hath, my lord, wrung from me my slow leave. Take thy fair hour, Laertes. Time be thine. But now, my cousin Hamlet, and my son. A little more than kin, and less than kind. How is it that the clouds still hang on you? Not so, my lord. 
I am too much of the sun. Good Hamlet, cast thy nighted color off. Do not forever with thy veiled lid seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowest tis common, all that lives must die. Ay, madam, it is common. If it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Seems, madam. Nay, it is. I know not seems. Tis sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these morning duties to your father. But you must know your father lost a father. That father lost, lost his. This is unmanly grief. We pray you, think of us as of a father. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray thee, stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. I shall in all my best obey you, madam. Why, tis a loving and a fair reply. Be as ourself in Denmark. Madam, come. Oh, that this too, too solid flesh would melt, thaw, and resolve itself into a dew. Or that the everlasting had not fixed his kin against self-slaughter. Oh, God. God. How weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. Fight on it. Ah, uh, fine, that it should come to this, but two months dead. Nay, not so much, not two. So excellent a king, heaven and earth must I remember. Why, she would hang on him, as if increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on. And yet, within a month, a little month, or ere those shoes were old with which she followed my poor father's body. Oh God, a beast that wants discourse of reason would have mourned longer. Married with my uncle. Ere yet the salt of most unrighteous tears had left the flushing in her galled eyes, she married. Oh, most wicked speed to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It is not, nor it cannot come to good. But break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Hail to your lordship. I am glad to see you well. Horatio, or I do forget myself. Fame, my lord, and your poor servant ever. My good lord. I am very glad to see you. But what is your affair in Elsinore? My lord, I came to see your father's funeral. I pray you do not mock me, fellow, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, it followed hard upon. Thrift, thrift, Horatio. The funeral bacon meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. Would I had met my dearest foe in heaven or ever I had seen that day, Horatio. My father, methinks I see my father. Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. My lord, I think I saw him yesternight. Saw who? My lord, the king, your father. The king, my father. Two nights together had these gentlemen, Marcellus and Bernardo, on, the on their watch in the dead, fast, middle of the night, been thus encountered. A figure like your father appears before them and with solemn march goes slow and stately by them. Thrice he walked and I with them the third night kept the watch where as they had delivered both in time the apparition comes. I knew your father, his hands are not more like. But where was this? My Lord, upon the platform where they walked. As I do live, my honored lord, tis true. Hold you the watch tonight? We do, my lord. Lord. Perchance twill knock again. I warrant it will. If it assume my noble father's person, I'll speak to it, though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace. So, fare you well. My necessaries are embarked, farewell. And sister, 
as the winds give benefit and convoy is assistant, do not sleep, but let me hear from you. You doubt that. For Hamlet and the trifling of his favor hold it a fashion and a toy in blood, a violet in the youth of primy nature. Forward, not permanent, sweet, not lasting, the perfume and suppliance of a minute, no more. No more but so. Think it no more. His greatness weighed, his will is not his own, for he himself is subject to his birth. He may not, as unvalued persons do, car for himself. For on his choice depends the safety and health of this whole state. Now we would loss your honor may sustain if with your credent ear you list his songs. Fear it, Ophelia, fear it, my dear sister, and keep you in the rear of your affections, out of shot and danger of desire. I shall the effect of this good lesson keep. I stay too long. I hear my father comes. A double blessing is a double grace. Occasion smiles upon a second leave. Yet here, Laertes, aboard, aboard for shame. The wind sits in the shoulder of your sail and you are stayed for. Here, my blessing with thee. And these few precepts in thy memory, see thou character. Uh, give thy thoughts no tongue, nor uh, any unproportioned thought is apt. Give every man thy ear, but few thy voice. Uh, take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Uh, neither a borrower nor a lender be, uh, for loan oft loses both itself and friend. It, it, this above all, to thine own self be true. And it must follow as the night, the day, thou canst not then be false to any man. Farewell, my blessing season this in thee. Most humbly do I take my leave, my lord. Farewell, Ophelia. Remember well what I have said to you. Tis in my memory locked, and you yourself shall keep the key of it. Very well. What is it, Ophelia, he hath said to you? So please you, something touching the Lord Hamlet. <laughs> Mary, well be thought. What is between you? Give me up the truth. He hath, my lord, of late made many tenders of his affection to me. <laughs> Affection? Pooh! You speak like a green girl. Do you believe his tenders, as you call them? My lord, he hath importuned me with love, and hath given countenance to his speech, my lord, with almost all the holy vows of heaven. I springes to catch woodcocks, I do know. When the blood burns, how prodigal the soul lends the tongue vows. It in few, Ophelia, do not believe his vows. This is for all. I would not, in plain terms, from this time forth, have you so slander any moment leisure as to give words or talk with the Lord Hamlet. Look to it. I charge you, come your ways. The air bites shrewdly. It is very cold. It is a nipping and an eager air. What hour now? I think it locks at twelve. No, it is struck. Indeed? I heard it not. Then it draws near the season where the spirit held his wont to walk. Look, my lord, it comes. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. Be thou a spirit of health, or a goblin damned, thou comest in such a questionable shape that I will speak to thee. I'll call thee Hamlet, king, father, royal dame. Oh, answer me! It beckons you to go away with it, but do not go with it. No, by no means. It will not speak, then I will follow it. Do not, my lord. Why, what should be the fear? 
It waves me still. Go on, I'll follow thee. You shall not go, my lord. I say I shall. Be ruled, you shall not go. My fate cries out. By heaven, I'll make a ghost of him that lets me. I say, away. Go on, I'll follow thee. Let's follow. Tis not fit thus to obey him. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Where wilt thou lead me? Speak, I'll go no further. Mark me. I will. My hour is almost come. Pity me not, but lend thy serious hearing to what I shall unfold. Speak, I am bound to hear. I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night. If thou didst ever thy dear father love, O oh God! Revenge his foul and most unnatural murder. Murder! Tis given out that sleeping in my orchard a serpent stung me. No, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul, my uncle. I, that incestuous, that adulterate beast, with witchcraft of his wit and traitorous gifts, O oh, wicked wit and gifts, that have the power so to seduce, one to his shameful lust the will of my most seeming virtuous queen. But soft, methinks I sent the morning air. Brief let me be. Sleeping within my orchard, my custom always of the afternoon, upon my secure hour thy uncle stole, with juice of cursed heaven, Hebnin in a vial, and in the porches of my ears did pour the leprous distillment, whose effect holds such an enmity with blood of man, that swift as quicksilver it courses through the natural gates and alleys of the body, and with a sudden vigor doth pause it and curd, like eager droppings into milk. The thin and wholesome blood, so did it mine. Thus was I, sleeping by a brother's hand, of life, of crown, of queen, at once dispatched. Oh, horrible, oh, horrible, most horrible. If thou hast nature in thee, bear it not. Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incense. Adieu, adieu, Hamlet. Remember me. Oh, all you host of heaven. Oh, earth. What else? O oh, most pernicious woman. O oh, villain. Villain, smiling, damned villain. My lord. My lord. My lord. Lord Hamlet? How is my noble lord? What news, my lord? Never make known what you have seen tonight. My lord, we will not. Nay, but swear it. In faith, my lord, not I. Nor I, my lord, in faith. Oh, day and night, but this is wondrous strange. And therefore, as a stranger, give it welcome. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. But come, and still your fingers on your lips, I pray. Time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite, that ever I was born to set it right.